Hey, why do we have to choose favorites? I right. love all of them. You guys are in for a treat. We are gonna bring you our top seven Canadian skates. This was very difficult. Um, I can't even pick off a menu. I am so indecisive. I'm a Libra. Like, what do you want from me? This is difficult stuff. I feel like we were we were put in a very tight corner. I couldn't even think. Yeah, of, it was hard to. Our producers it down. were putting so much pressure on us. I felt so like so much. Was like, it's so much. <laughs> Why? Why do we have to choose favorites? I like right. all of them. Number right. one. Number one. No, number seven. Number seven. There you <laughs> number go. Number seven. <laughs> so number seven is Emmanuel Sanju's 2003-2004 Grand Prix Final. This was major because he wasn't even supposed to compete at this Grand Prix Final. I think he was actually even second alternate and came and won the competition. And not only won, but he is one of the few figure skating men to beat Evgeny Plushenko in any event. Uh, he busted out an amazing quad toe, triple toe, a little step out, and just a great program. And to like not even know that you're competing and then to win and beat one of the world's best, incredible. Yeah, and Emmanuel was always one of those skaters that you never really knew what he was gonna do. And he was so good with so many gifts. Uh, and it was it was just an incredible moment to see him step up and uh, and take that title. Moving on to number six, my event, my competitors, Eric Radford, Megan Duhamel, when they won uh, their second back-to-back -back world title uh, in Boston. What an incredible moment! They came off winning in 2015, and uh, you know, being defending world champions is a very difficult thing. They had a great season, but not as successful as the season before leading up to Worlds. I think Eric said they would have been happy with a medal. They had an incredible free skate to hometown glory by Adele and just brought the house down. I was standing watching beside the ice uh, in my socks, I'd just taken my skates off and I was going bananas for them. Um, incredible moment, back-to-back -back world champions. Number five, Shailen Bourne and Victor Kratz winning their first world title. You really have the sense, they're two skating as one. First Canadian ice dance team to win a world title. What more can we say? They've been perfection and Canada's favorite ice dance team until Tess and Scott came. I think they're still everyone's favorite. I love Shailen Bourne. She's an amazing choreographer now, but this was such a huge moment. I remember being a kid and watching in my uh, mom's room with her and just jumping up and down when they uh, won Worlds. And I think this was right after uh, the Olympics where they had, had a few mistakes. And yeah, uh, you know, it was super exciting. I was like, wait, yeah. they won and they're not from Europe. Yeah. <laughs> What's going on? Huge Drum. moment in Canadian yeah. ice dance. And I would say yeah. it definitely was when we turned the corner and we're like, uh, we're going up. And, that was and then just the took now. over ice dance. Yeah. <laughs> All right, number four, Caitlin Osmond, women's world champion. The first one in like 800 years, <laughs> I think. The one before that was Karen Magnuson, uh, you know, which only happened when like her family migrated on skates from Sweden in like the 1400s. <laughs> Just kidding, it wasn't that long. It was like 45 years. Um, but like, what an incredible <laughs> moment amongst some of the hardest women skating we've seen to date. Coming right off from the Olympics, all Canadian figure skaters, Canadians were like running high, we're like, wow, we killed it. And then she gets a world title. Uh, absolutely amazing. Well deserved. Spectacular. Number three. Uh, we kind of cheated here, but again, they put us. It's in our corner. show. We do whatever we want. Yeah, we we do what we want to do. Kurt Browning, Casablanca, nineteen ninety three Worlds. Elvis Stiko, Dragonheart, also Worlds. You know, just this era. The era of Kurt and Elvis, like anywhere from the beginning of Kurt to the end of Elvis's career, is just kind of like that stretch of figure skating and their continued show skating just the Kurt and Elvis time of figure skating we'd like to put in there because I mean 
how do you break it down into one skate? It's impossible. Yeah, hundred percent. Number two, uh, this one was a beautiful and gut-wrenching moment. Joni Rochette at the Vancouver Olympics skated the day after she found out her mother had passed away en route to watching her in Vancouver. Um, I don't think there was a dry eye in the country, maybe even in the world for everyone that was watching. She went out and performed two gutsy, powerful performances and um, what more can you say? Like such an incredible moment for skating. One of the biggest moments I think in our sports history, uh, not just because of, you know, uh, what she went through, but also her skating too. But that whole moment was just so impactful and monumental and um, she's a hero. Yeah, there was definitely not a dry eye in my house after her short program to La Camposita. Uh, she's done so much for Canadian skating um, and she is still turning something that was so devastating in her life into uh, something positive and she's still being an advocate for heart health and is now a doctor. Uh, we love you, Joanne. Okay. Whew. Back to fun, because that's always a heavy one. Number one, drum roll. Not much surprise, Tessa Virtue and Scott Moyer, 2010 Vancouver Olympics. First Olympic gold medal for a North American ice dance team. They were very young and very good and won an Olympic gold medal in their home country. Honestly, nothing could be better. The energy in my house around Canada, everyone just jumping up and down. I've, I just remember even watching the compulsory dances. I've never seen anyone uh, clap and cheer as loud as I have for a Tango Romantica ever in my life. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, oh, she just did a drop top. Wow. Oh, sorry. A S push. Oh, no. S push. S push. S turn. S turn. S -turn. That's true. Good, good. We're Changing we're learning language. gradually, you know. Changing the language. We're unlearning. The language. Unlearning. Yes. That's what it is. To tie that in, their 2018 Olympic gold uh, medal, um, especially that free dance, Moulin Rouge, um, an incredible way to cap off a historic career, uh, the most successful figure skating career ever, um, and have made Canada immensely, immensely proud. Um, so. It's kind of a no-brainer to put Tessa and Scott as our top pick. We do have some very important honorable mentions. Uh, one being Kevin Reynolds, his uh, free skate in the team event in Sochi. Canada pretty much had silver in the bag and he went out and just nailed the skate of his life. Got robbed by the judges. They put Blushenko ahead of him, but he should have. He outskated Blushenko. Yeah, he should have beat Blushenko. Like, yeah, Blushenko just got the Russian scores. We all know it. Yeah. and also was crappy because he only came to get a medal for the team event and then dipped for the actual individual. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Claiming and, his back was injured, but he just yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, whatever, whatever, whatever. <laughs> and then uh, uh, another honorable mention: um, Robin Hood by Dylan Moskovich. Uh, the crown jewel of my career. <laughs> you killed it, it was amazing. People still Thank remember you. it, Thank I you. still watch it. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, we can't leave out the Asher Hill, uh, you know, the longest nip slip that any Canadian <laughs> skater has ever had. An entire program with both nipples out. He was shirtless, it was on purpose. But I mean, like, how do you not give that an honorable mention? <laughs> My favorite honorable mention, though, coming up, uh, I don't think you can, I don't think anyone can beat this, but young, young, young Brian Shales, who was a wonderful pair of skater. He is a great coach, coaches in Oakville, um, coaches many great skaters, including Chris Moore Towers and Michael Marinero. We have a clip of him <laughs> skating as a young lad with Janine Bellick, and it is probably. <laughs> The best throw attempt I've ever seen in my entire life. What I really love about this is one, you know, growth that shows everyone's humble beginnings in skating, <laughs> as well as his indignation as he just tossed her with no care for her life onto the ground. He's like, why didn't you land that? I love it. Like, he's like, oh, look, she tried to do a flying throw, <laughs> flying camel. 
you know, and she fell and he's like, what was that? That's so funny. Okay, I'll try and help you up. She's like, get away from me. <laughs> and that in a nutshell is kind of what it's like learning to skate pairs as a young skater. Uh, that's it. <laughs> yeah. Let us know your favorite uh, Canadian skating moments, whether it's a competition, exhibition, uh, whatever. Let us know in the comments. Please subscribe, follow. We will be back next week or whenever to uh, bring you back more hilarity, entertainment, and figure skating stoof. Yeah, you're welcome. Bye-bye. Toodles.